Um, good afternoon. Thank you for the invitation to be part of the Refugee Integration Conference and Art Festival. My name is Fernanda Escobar and I am a PhD student at Brandeis University. I, stu I study social policy focused on immigration. I am pleased to be shared this presentation with the Consul of Ecuador in Boston, Consul Beatriz Almeida de Stein. Um, let me share um, quickly our presentation. So this afternoon we will be talking about Ecuadorians in Massachusetts, the role of the country of origin governments in supporting the integration abroad. First, uh, let me properly introduce uh, Consul Almeida. Uh, Consul Almeida has been serving the Ecuadorian community in Massachusetts for 18 years. She has been part of different organizations. For instance, she is the founder of the Association of Ecuadorians of New England and the Ibero-American uh, Consul Association of New England. Um, I am a PhD student at Brandeis University, but also I am doing uh, I am a part graduate research assistant at the Institute on Assets and Social Policy and at the Freeman School of Nutrition Science and Policy in Tufts University. To start this presentation, I would like to share some numbers on the Ecuadorians here in the US. Uh, Ecuadorians are the 10th largest population of Hispanic origin living in the United States, accounting for 1% of the US Hispanic population in 2017. Uh, the Ecuadorian foreign-born population living in the U.S. grew by 109% uh, in 2000, from 2000 to 2017. About 42% of foreign-born Ecuadorians have been in the U.S. for around 20 years, and 50% of, of them are U.S. citizens. 23% of the Ecuadorians that are over 25 have obtained bachelor's degree. 13% of U.S. born Ecuadorians live in poverty, and the Ecuadorian population is concentrated in New York, New Jersey, and Florida. Ecuadorians in Massachusetts are concentrated in Milford, Broughton, Fall River, and Lawrence. So let's start asking um, Consul Almeida, what is the consulate of Ecuador doing well to support integration? Yes, uh, the Good uh, afternoon, good morning. This is Beatriz Almeristan, Consul General of Ecuador, and thank you very much to have me here in this panel. And um, the, uh, as a consul to, to the um, Massachusetts, uh, the, and to offer the community, I am very, uh, very strong working with them, to giving them all the information and uh, servicing to, as a consul to the um, community can be in the paperwork of the documents that to them plus you know to give them all the information with uh, uh, guiders with lawyers uh, services with them um, media with them um, a lot of the information to them to have ideas what to do with the immigration for them to very close service to the community of Ecuador here and um, up to date every day. Thank you so much. Um, let me go to the second question. What is the consulate of Ecuador struggling with? Um, right now, you know, with the, what was going on with the pandemic, it is uh, more important for the community to have all the information about the um, coronavirus, what is happening here in, um, in the United States and all over the world. So uh, what I tried to integrate to the community to provide resource and guidance to this new changing environment, what is happening here, and establish safety measures for them according to the guidance given by the CDC and the government, all the rules to follow um, for them. Uh, to you know to especially it's so important for them to know that they have to wear masks they have to be six feet apart and to not to have more gathers to you know to people because there used to be always give you know every weekend to get together to in the parks in the houses that is the tradition of them so for them to respect that you know to keep 
apart all these uh, gathers. Thank you. Uh, for the third question, I will talk a little bit about it. Um, how is the Consulate of Ecuador using research evidence to affect practice? Uh, from my experience working with the consulate, we know that it's very important to understand the community and their needs. So that is why always we try to use data and research to create a program. So the consulate didn't have a database years ago, but when we started issuing consular IDs, we were able to get more information um, such as um, age, gender, location, place of birth. So with this data, we are trying to create programs to benefit the population in areas of education, force work, development, etc. Also, this data helps the consulate to inform the Ecuadorian uh, government and policymakers to analyze and create policies and programs in Ecuador that might benefit Ecuadorians abroad and their families left behind. Uh, dear Consul, how has the Consulate of Ecuador adapted its service to the COVID-19 situation? Yeah, um, the first thing I did is, you know, to follow all the information they gave us. I prepared the office in order to continue offering service to the community, you know, with the guidance, with the safety. I put all the glass around and I just um, have very strict previous uh, appointments and I receive just one by one who is doing the document and I don't have children allowed in the building and I, you know give them all the safety and so far it's working very well giving them all the service to the community because they need it they need the service it's so important for them you know to have the IDs and identifications and uh, for the for the families mm -hmm. correct uh, well thank you for your time if you want to give a final thought uh, about the work that you are doing or any recommendation to the community? Yes, um, like I said, every day I give them, you know, I call the um, leaders and the communities to talk to make sure they are safe, to make sure they're doing well. And so far, you know, it's very little um, people of the community Ecuadorian are being affected and it's, um, so it looks like they're listening and I am very close to them. And that's my role in my service as a consul to make sure they have been there for them. Thank you so much, uh, Consul Almeida. Uh, one final thought on my part is like uh, consulates should work together with immigrant uh, organizations here in the US. Sometimes it's very hard to have that communication. However, the consulate of Ecuador is doing a great job actually. They are working together with organizations like MIRA to support and give information, but also in case of the Ecuadorians are struggling in any way, um, we always try to respond very fast. Um, uh, we will looking for. We are looking forward to hear more, like the questions that you have in the panel. So thank you so much.